You know what a lot of people struggle with is their own emotions. Like when people get rejected or they get like really nasty with you and you just, at some point you have to decide in life that they can't hurt me. And if I don't care, it's not that you don't care what they think. I'm just not going to let it pull me backward. Because if you talk to a hundred people and 90 people reject you and you're going to base, well, the majority of them say no, that's the problem that, that messes with your head and your psyche. And that's the challenge with what we're dealing with. That's, what, I, that's yeah. my issue. Like I'm having problem with like, like having those good leads because like um i was doing the alana market but then i spoke with Zach, and Zach was telling me if i was using a dialer and i told him that i wasn't right and using what? Was, if i was using a dialer okay yeah um and i wasn't so he was like oh just stick to your market so what i did i'm using prop stream but what i did i put a a high, a high equity mm -hmm. um one of the videos that you posted uh, like um a couple of days ago five um what was it it was like the the five list to pull so i okay. put the high equity one and i started calling that one it's funny because when he told me that that was last week start calling this market and doing more of this market but mm -hmm. i kind of like i don't know i kind of i kind of got stuck and i didn't know even though i knew what to do feel like i didn't know how to do it or how to start it again it was like a whole reset yeah so, so which market are you doing right now uh i'm in connecticut so i'm doing hard for yeah because okay. that's the one that has like a uh, hundred thousand people plus you got a big population there yes yeah, so and, and the how you say the minimum um arv is like 250 300 it's cheaper in florida yeah so florida like florida went from 100 like to 440 i'm like i've, I've never like the number staggering here crazy yeah and I'm uh but that's it, like listen it. if you can ever do stuff in like your backyard it, it's usually either e even though they're even higher price points it's always easier because you don't have to learn the market you you kind of know which sides of town are which um but the problem is we are we are still in the middle of a market reset cycle um so to speak and there's like sweet spots in it so prices are still dropping so some areas they're actually going up. I, as shocking as that sounds, we have parts in Florida where it's still challenging. I have one market like it's I've never seen anything like it before. It's like standing room only for deals. Oh, wow. So we're back to paying like a lot more for that. And then on the other side of town, I have to like go on the other extreme low. So the problem is if you're in a virtual market, it's hard to wrap your heads around when the price the the prices change and what your cash buyers need. The only difficult part in Florida is cash buyers. If it's under like 250, they're easy. Once it gets above 250 it's a lot of work so 250 anything below is considered cheap in florida and it moves lightning fast and they're standing room only once you approach 300 it's like a different ball game and then once you get in the 350 to 450 it's a pain in the butt you gotta i started in this market they were thirty thousand dollar houses so it's like it's just a number i don't mind with that but the biggest change we are all experiencing is what cash buyers will pay for stuff and their tolerance and that's the challenge we're having with it so um so you switch from doing virtual to like the local market. Yes, so. but I'm still like calling, like I'm using prop stream to call. I'm, I'm going to see if I can put the government list um, pretty soon because uh, that's probably going to be my best bet now. Because, always, always. Like this, um, this high equity feels like I'm calling, but I'm like, okay, I, like I don't even get good like leads. Like, and I, this is the thing. One, so how many of you calls? I pulled 1,800 and I feel like I, I think I called like 300 today because I'm nothing. doing by hand and nothing like one there was one guy that was like oh yeah i'm in puerto rico but as soon as i get from i get from puerto rico um i'm thinking of selling yeah that's the only one but out of those calls most, also all of them was like no 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 don't call me so so just to let you know high equity is um for those who don't know what a high equity is just basically a list that um they have a lot more equity in the house than they have um uh debt on it so what what was your cutoff when you were in the high equity list um percentage wise i think i had like a 50 because okay. yeah, that's i had right. a little bit too much yeah, number yeah. yeah as you get lower they come more and more of a pain in the butt yes and then if you get too high they don't care so like four between 45 and 55 is kind of the sweet spot for high equity but high equity they're tough list right now because we have the same challenge here in florida with them we run the crap we have to run every list because we, we run so much marketing exactly. um our, our best list still right now are government lists they're harder to work they take much more energy to get and that's the only reason why we do better with them so it's you just you're gonna have to be very persistent and patient getting those lists because that's our challenge like we all have to draw straws in our company who have to chase the list for the month so and for me the lowest on the totem pole do i have to go to to pull up the government list some of them i see i was seeing in in 
mean free wholesaling that that I can do them through the computer. But a lot of them, some you can, but uh, as I said, that it's all based on you know your local market. So every every municipality, every county has a different way of doing it. Um, the problem is they love to reject you on email. They like to do it on the phone in person. It's a pain in the ass to turn you down. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of work. It's like so. Here's the challenge you deal with them: like they're public record, but they have privacy policies again. So they're all public records. You guys argue the wrong thing. You have to figure out how to penetrate their private policy, and you have to do it nice. Yes. There's no argument; they're not public records. They are guys, but what they're they're the, the the little filter they're catching you on is the privacy policy. So you have to befriend them and figure out how to get in there. The best way to if so, if you want to break into someone's house, make sure someone living in that house tells you how to do it. It's the same thing when you try to get these lists. Make sure somebody working in that government building knows how to get you in. But you're going to have to befriend them. You're going to have to compliment the heck out of them and just build a massive amount of rapport. That's how we do it. And by the way, I've been rejected multiple times. I send my wife in. She gets whatever. Like, <laughs> But women get <laughs> more than it guys. Like, it's just the truth. Exactly. You give me a woman on a phone versus a man, they just they get further. It's a True. fact, guys. Don't sit True. there and argue it. It's the truth. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's a fact. <laughs> like, I sure. love female acquisitions people. They're excellent for virtual and on the phone. But in person, I always worry about their safety. <laughs> But it's true. So get those government lists and just get cracking on them. I, I think you're going to have a better success rate, but you, you just got to kind of keep grinding through them. And um, if know. I would have to pull up a list from PropStream that you recommend that it could do better than the high equity, which one should I try? Uh, in PropStream, um, I would try the vacant list and the pre-probate. Pre-probate. And those right off the bait. Now I got like 600 of those. I swear. <laughs> you don't have. You don't have. You only. You don't have to pull them every month. You, in your case, I'd pull it like once a quarter and just give it a shot and then make sure you filter the ones that are on market on mls on filter like i was doing i it's funny because i i filter the vacant ones and i did exactly what you said just now yeah. should i do two on two years of ownership as well minimum uh, I did no, it. I, I just, like, that's how it's up it to was. you you gotta you so i always tell everybody come a ninja like list warrior and you just play around with it but in the beginning like the problem of the pre-probates there's not a lot to begin with so because yeah. even if you get a list 100 you're probably going to call like half of them because like your common sense says this, this is ridiculous. Like some of them are like vacant piece of land, like nowhere, like some of it you kind of look at. So um, just, you know, get through it. The pre-probates and the vacant to work well because you only got to pull them like once a quarter. And that list is already built in your subscription. So it doesn't cost you anymore. Um, and then I would add the government list because where there's smoke, there's fire, this is usually going to be your freshest leads on people are going to need help. And by the way, the market should get worse all the way through the end of this year. I've already watched all the data. Q4 seems like, I don't think a whole lot, it's not, Nothing's going to get better between now and uh, December, November, December. So you got to look at it. So the idea is figure out your 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 method of madness as soon as possible and just yeah. get into a rhythm and just like keep it going. I, I rather anybody stay local to home because it's just easier in the long run. Yeah, and the funny thing is by the summer, I'm, 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 I should be in Florida because um, my girlfriend was been thinking to for moving like three years ago. And yeah. this summer we decided even if I don't make a deal, I'm still going to move out there. I have like a family member out there. So what part of Florida? Um, My friend lives in Leesburg. Okay, Leesburg, yeah. That's where he okay. lives in, so I guess I'm going to go through that area well, first. Yeah, you can <laughs> spar as long as you promise not to smash my face in and break my arm. I promise I won't. So you let probably... me, I got one last question for you. <laughs> Do you guys test like breaking points of like submissions of what you can handle? Like, because it's, when you get oh, in the yeah. ring and they're, 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 you know, got an arm bar wrench. Before a fight, if yeah. if I know I have a fight and uh, my friend like Brennan, the one that's going to fight yeah. in, in Las Vegas, if, he, yeah. if he has a fight, we have to test each other. If we hit ourselves hard to not ourselves out sometimes yeah but once we know we hurt one of us one if i hurt him he's kind of stuck yeah and if he hurts me he kind of like take it more light then and let me ask you do you have to like at least obviously it, it eventually happens when you fight enough people because someone's always better than you but when you guys are sparring do you have an event where someone just says listen i'm gonna put a, a rear naked choke on you i'm just gonna like so you oh. can kind of feel like when it goes out sometimes it happens yeah like sometimes yeah, just, when <laughs> you're sparring it goes so bad it's, it's supposedly supposed listen, to be i had boxing. that happen in high school wrestling I, I got because in, in high school they can include the arm and if they're good enough and they're powerful enough they can still ch like choke you out but I, I was always curious I'm like because people understand an RNC, it's not comfortable you just black out from lax to and usually come right back but yes um, but man that's how it feels when you it guys feels wrench bad. those necks and stuff I'm like man I, I, I'd yeah. be tapping out bad oh like, you should see us when we spar and it's funny he's he, the guy he's fighting um yeah. in Las Vegas he's fight for for American Tap Team yeah in well, Florida you come to Florida man let's uh I you gotta like help me get
get some seed. I, I just love it, dude. I, I think it's just to me, like I used to watch this type of fighting and like when they did it back in like 90, 91, when it was it was just chaotic. Two guys just went in there. That was crazy back then. <laughs> Somebody yeah, that didn't know now, how to fight. Now you look at it, it's like it's so specialized. Honestly, it's like unless you're an extreme in my opinion, unless you're an extreme athlete, you have to train most of your entire life to do this. Kids start oh, out yeah. grappling and wrestling, and if they can figure that out, which is actually one of the harder parts, because a lot of guys who fight, they don't want to wrestle. And when they yes. go against a guy who can wrestle, it's tough. So pole sawing is the same thing. You got to just kind of figure out each facet. You just got to figure out how to get leads. And then you figure out like submissions and everything else. And like, you know, you do creative finance, you do wholesaling, you do all sorts of stuff on it, but just get your core skills down. And yeah, I was uh, stuck today watching videos just because I've been me making mistakes on one of the videos yeah. to the, I think you posted today that it said basically the mistakes that you, why you haven't gotten your first deal yet. And it was because you're making this and this and this mistake. Yeah. And I was making three of them and I'm like, okay, I'm not staying in one of, of like stick to one on um, basically market. Yeah. Um, follow just like one like rule, keep into mm -hmm. this one. Like all these little things that I'm watching is like, okay, I was making yeah. mistakes at this, so now I have to stay yeah. consistent, but at this. Th so th th think about the training you do in MMA. Like I remember the, the when my son, the first time I sent him out to wrestling, you know what I told him? Because I, I knew told. the guy was going to destroy him. <laughs> That's they threw him on the varsity <laughs> team. I just said, I told my son to go, don't get pinned. That's it. That was your goal. Because I knew it, there was no chance he was going to win. Like he, he had, he had a half Nelson, you know, and a single leg takedown. That's all he knew. He's, he was only, he only wrestled for like a month. Oh, you and have the coach to goes, see. Hey, I'm going to throw you in. We got a hot. I go, dude, like he's doesn't like, he'll get it. I go, it's just because people understand like you progress as a person over four years. The same thing happens in wholesaling. It's like, you just got to got one move. You just got to call people and eventually you'll figure it out. But like, I remember looking at him. He's like, what do you mean? Don't get pinned. I'm like, don't get pinned. Now yes. I, he didn't get pointed out either. As like, he won, like he lost 14 to two, but I'm like, okay. And then we used to progress and they say, Hey, we got to get five points in this map. I go, you just need to get a, uh, a takedown better than before. Team. And you just kind of do it. And then one, then after that, they hit the weight room, he figured out conditioning. And then at the point, whereas when he got really good, like he didn't need me anymore. He's like, dad, you're like, and I wasn't <laughs> that good. And no. sometimes training your own kid is the worst thing you can do. And yes, you just got to yes. let him make the mistakes and train. And then I couldn't keep him out of the weight room. He conditioned, he'd run 10 miles. And just like, he just came, he's like, I'm just going to. And then he said, now I'm going to make everybody pay for the crap I was put. And that's where we kind of got to it. And that's how I look at wholesaling your first year or two. You're just like, <laughs> hey, I just don't want to get pinned. I don't want to get sued. I don't want anything. And like, you just keep making and you just, okay, I'm going to get a few more points here. I'm going to get a few more points. And after a while, and all those failures you've ever had in wholesaling, one day they become your best ally. It's the weirdest things. I know a lot of people say like that. Honestly, guys, I just got ran under the bus under a deal. I partnered up with someone. I trusted them. Yeah, no, we mean. They didn't do their part of it. I go, I appreciate it. Now I know where I stand. I know where I will never be near you again. And that's, that's fine. Like I, I do a lot of deals. I'm not worried about it, but you figure people out quickly. So like if you keep doing the same thing over and over and you're getting the same crappy results, then it's on you. We all have to make pivots with it. So keep doing what you're doing. You're still, you're, you're still in the, I don't want to get pinned phase. And like, how do I move forward with this? And you're doing it. So just keep, do the two lists I told you about and add the government list and then just keep pressing forward. Okay. Definitely will. I'm going to keep you posted as well. Okay. Plus. Definitely, man. Okay, buddy. Keep in touch. I, I'm, I got some information for the next one. <laughs> What's that? Um, About the whole fighting. Like, you okay, have to well, go see something nice. I don't want to bore everybody you after. Fight. I know everybody has a fight, but like, I love like Florida. So now like uh, me and my son go out and we seek all like the, uh, you know, the local low level fights, but it's a little weird. We have some problems with it because they, they can get uh little secret. You know why you should go see what? Let's say I'm going to go sparring to another gym, mm -hmm. just sparring in another gym. Yeah. It gets better than a fight. I'm telling you. Yeah. Oh man, oh, my, we don't my respect friend none used of them. To, uh, back in the day before it started, my friend started, uh, I think it was Imperial down in like Coconut uh, Grove, but uh, it was just such a financial undertaking and the economy was rough. That was like 2012, 13. And he used to like, he yes. did some of the most amazing names and pictures like back in the day. But the problem is once the corporations kind of took over UFC with sponsorships and stuff, yes. and then you had like team, like it was, it was, he's like, it's crazy because I'm supposed to have all these eight guys here and then they're going to bring in their team and I can't charge them. And then this guy coaches and uh, he lost millions of dollars. It was like oh, really man. cool. But I'm like, because he asked me for a loan. I'm like, there's no way. <laughs> there's no way, no. man. I, like I get out of this. It's like you have the top food chain and then like, and it's going to be interesting with see what uh, Jake Paul, like he guarantees he's going to change like uh, the mixed pay. martial arts. Hopefully, but. hopefully he, he gets the pay. The pay. They get, yeah. He make it better because honestly, they're not paying much. No, I know. Well, they, you know, you have the top. I, I honestly don't think, and I'm not knocking like, Dana White.
right? But I think um, when he retires and stuff, I think a lot of changes will probably come about. But we'll see. They got to take. It's going to change. Yeah, we'll it's see. It's going to change for sure. Okay, bud. I'll talk to you soon, man. Thank Go you for your it. time.